an unusual weather pattern continues. If we look at the upper air chart, 250 millibars, we see the polar front jet from California up through Manitoba and into northern Quebec. South of that, we've got a blocking pattern. This is a cutoff high, a cutoff low south of that, and that's what we refer to as a Rex block. Also a deep trough from the Canadian prairies to the west coast of the U.S., so in some respects, this is kind of a winter-like pattern. There's a look at the climate variables. Things are pretty close to neutral. The Arctic Oscillation indicating a slightly stronger polar vortex. We are definitely heading into El Nino, and the Manajulian Oscillation is indeterminate. There's the surface chart this afternoon, a strong cold front making its way through the northern Rockies, temperatures down in the 50s and 60s up there in Montana. In Colorado, we've got some severe weather, which we'll take a look at shortly. We've got this backdoor front coming into Arkansas, Oklahoma, North Texas, and parts of the southeastern U.S., and that's being caused by this 1020 to 1024 millibar ridge across the northeastern U.S., you can see the dew points up in that area are in the 50s and 60s, so that is some drier air coming south. Frontal boundary from North Carolina down through the Gulf Coast region. And as we go into Texas, we hit that dry line and some very hot temperatures up to 113 at San Angelo and 110 at Junction. And looking at the current data, they've had a cool down there at Junction down to 88 degrees in a thunderstorm down to 112 at San Angelo. We have 113 at Del Rio and 113 at Catula. The northeastern U.S. getting some of that cooler, drier air from eastern Canada. Just some towering cumulus down there, maybe a few shallow CBs in the mountains. But further up north, we catch some of that wildfire smoke. This is the satellite imagery from yesterday. You can see that as we get into the afternoon, plenty of wildfire smoke, very thick. We can see the hot spots overnight. And then going into today, we wash out that old smoke plume and new fires get going once again. And that's kind of a inaccessible area north of the main highways, which is well to the south. So I'm not totally sure that they can get firefighters up in that region. In the southeast, this is what the radar looked like last night about midnight. If we roll that forward, you can see a bit of rotation in the precipitation field. And that represents an upper level low. Very easy to pick out in that data. And you can see this new MCS get started in western Florida and move southeastward during the day. Numerous, numerous cells going up across southern Georgia into the Florida panhandle. And that brings us up to the current time. We do have flood watches through the North Carolina Piedmont, down into Georgia itself and into southeastern Alabama. And along the coast of North Carolina, strong possibility of rip currents along the beaches there, especially around the barrier islands in that spot right there, with uh, strong swell and onshore winds battering that part of the state. Thunderstorms have developed across Texas this afternoon with strong heating and very high dew points. We're going to take a look at those momentarily, but you can see most of the heavy activity from Denton up to Gainesville. And we've had this cluster track right across the DFW airport area, and that produced gusts up to 20, I think 25 knots, somewhere in there, and another cluster in the hill country around Junction with temperatures up there to 113. And we did look at this earlier, but I wanted to point out the very high dew points, close to 80 degrees in northeast Texas, 79 at Corsicana, 79 at Palestine, and 77 at DFW, even up to Wichita Falls, 77 degree dew point. And the moisture axis, that's pretty much it, all through this zone right here, dew points in the upper 70s. And that does provide fuel for the thunderstorms. This is theta E, which is kind of a combination of temperature and dew point. The higher the theta E, the more the parcels will be to the right side of the skew T. And of course, you want those parcels on that side to get that lift. 
And that paints out the moisture axis right there from Houston up to Fort Worth and into the eastern Texas panhandle. And yes, it extends into Colorado. And they're looking at a severe weather threat this afternoon. SPC looking at a enhanced risk in northeastern Colorado. They've got a tornado watch in effect from Denver, from Fort Morgan, all the way up into Cheyenne, and up to, looks like, just, yeah, right around Douglas, Wyoming. And a separate tornado watch box in the eastern Texas Panhandle, up to about Meade and just south of Dodge City. And let's go to that satellite because that's where things are happening. Definitely evidence of a boundary all the way from Louisiana into East Texas. You can see that by that rope cloud field right there. But up to the north, there's a change in cloud textures. We have transverse banding right there around Quana, Vernon, Childress. And that differs from this elevated cumulus that we have out around Lubbock and Midland. So that is a boundary, and it appears that storm is basically tracking right along it. The stuff in the hill country, not quite so much. Just looks like a more of a quasi-stationary complex, although that could get some movement down towards San Antonio and Austin. Starting to get some towers just north of, uh, I guess it'd be, yeah, just north of Amarillo, out around Pampa. You can see it putting out that turkey tower, and this area is under a tornado watch. So there could be some action there later. And as we move north, yeah, they've got that tornado watch up in that area, a cluster of thunderstorms out there around Akron, up towards Cheyenne, maybe just east of there, and more storms coming off the mountains further to the west. There's a large-scale view of all that, and we've got the flood watches in effect in eastern Colorado, Further east in Kansas, not much going on. The atmosphere has been overturned by a large MCS that moved across the central part of the state earlier this morning. And that's what the surface chart looks like this afternoon. Moisture axis from about Goodland up to Denver and anywhere along and even just north of there, dew points are in the mid-60s. And that's pretty high for the high plains. They typically don't get dew points much above 60 degrees. In California and the southwestern U.S., fair skies. There are some showers in the mountains of New Mexico there. And we do see some cirrus coming out from old Mexico. That's going to be linked up with an upper-level jet that's moving to the northeast. And in the northwestern U.S., some evidence of troughing. You can see the flow is kind of working a little bit like that painting out the axis of a trough across the western states. And, of course, we've also got that towering cumulus and low-top cumulonimbus indicating instability from pockets of cold air in the mid and upper levels. And there's the current AWIPS graphic. Again, this is the same type of chart, basically the, the same system used by the National Weather Service. So this is what the forecasters there are seeing 500 millibars, that's up at 3 kilometers at about 18,000 feet. And you can see that troughing there in the northwestern U.S. and the colder temperatures down to minus 22, indicated by those red figures. And that's going to be associated with steeper lapse rates out there in Montana, Idaho, and Washington. A frontal system is centered on Wyoming, cold front extending down to about Las Vegas, Temperatures there about, uh, I think that's 89 degrees, contrasting with 103 at Phoenix, and much cooler in the high deserts. Heading up to Alaska, under the influence of North Pacific air, a little bit of onshore flow there, producing rain around Anchorage, down to Valdez, and Cordova. Another outbreak of cool air affecting the north slope of Alaska, then shifting east into Canada, northwesterly flow through the Canadian high Arctic. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s, which is very close to seasonal normals. An included weather system moving through Labrador. Cold air advection sweeping down through Baffin Island and northern Quebec. And then we do see some tropical airs made it all the way into northern Ontario. 
temperatures in the 80s, way up there in the taiga regions of Ontario. So let's return to that mid-tropospheric graphic and see what's in store over the next several days. Now, we did point out that this is a Rex block. You can see the high north of a cutoff low, which is typically the opposite of what we would normally see. In offshore, we've got a cutoff low buried within this large mid-latitude trough. And in the middle, a high pressure area. This is part of the subtropical high, the subtropical ridge, and we've got this ridge extending all the way up there into Canada, connecting with that other high in Quebec. So this all here is an area of very warm temperatures in the lower and mid-troposphere. So let's take that forward. As we would expect with the blocking pattern, things are not going to move much in the eastern U.S. We do get some progression of that troughing in the western U.S., another disturbance moving into California for tomorrow. There it goes and heads into Nevada for Friday and then up into Montana for Saturday. So I guess they're going to get yet more rain in Montana. It's been a very wet spring and early summer. And yeah, by the way, this is the first day of summer. It started about four or five hours ago. Now, we are in meteorological summer. We've been like that for at least a few weeks. But this is astronomical summer now. So the days are at their longest. So heading into the weekend, looks pretty dull except for the northeastern U.S. with this trough lifting to the northeastern U.S. And up there in Minnesota and the Dakotas also looks a little bit stormy. But for the rest of the country, it looks a little bit dry I would not be surprised to see some rain continuing in the southeastern U.S. That big subtropical ridge builds into Texas as we go into the weekend. So it looks like continued hot in that part of the country. And as we go into next week, it looks like the patterns really do not change all that much. We see continued troughing in the western coast region and continued troughing out east with ridging in the central part of the country. And this is a big old stubborn high across Texas and Oklahoma. So I guess we're looking at another one to two weeks of hot weather. And of course, hurricane season is coming fast upon us. We've got Tropical Storm Brett out there approaching Martinique and Dominica. Currently, winds are up to 65 miles an hour. It's about nine miles an hour, short of a Category 1 hurricane. And it's tracking like that. Let's take a look at that exact track. Yeah, there we go. There's the track. It's expected to remain a tropical storm, apparently. So conditions for strengthening not really looking all that great. And they're talking about moderate mid-level shear becoming a negative factor and keeping it right there at 55 knots. And then it's expected to get into stronger shear out over the Caribbean, which leads to weakening of that storm. And let's take a look at the GFS forecast for the tropics. This is AWIPS graphics once again. This is National Weather Service graphics. And you can see Tropical Storm Brett right there and Invest 93L. If that becomes a named storm, that will be Tropical Storm Cindy. And I did warn you last week that very likely the GFS forecasts would be an error. And we did see Brett being forecast to move somewhat like that. Well, the GFS has kind of fallen in line with a more southerly track. You can see that moving into the Caribbean and weakening. And back behind it, 93L, that does some of that recurvature that we saw with Brett. So I would say that the movement is probably still unknown at this time. And I don't see any more waves coming off of Africa in the near term. But of course, we will keep an eye on that. Now we are looking at the possibility for some severe weather in Central Europe for tomorrow. What we see is a bare clinic zone across Germany and France. You can see cyclonic turning of the winds right there that paints out the location of a low pressure area and a front. And as we roll this forward into tomorrow, that's going to be when the severe weather is. We've got a low pressure area moving across Luxembourg right there. Strong cold front, warm front. 
And somewhere in here, we're looking for a convective weather system, probably a strong MCS, maybe even a derecho. But I really don't have the data to know what exactly is going to happen. Unfortunately, we just get coarse model data for that part of Europe. But somewhere in here, yeah, there is the support for an MCS. So this is going to be around midday tomorrow on Thursday. You can see it rolling out into Germany and into the southeastern part of Germany right there. So it appears maybe some of the strongest severe weather will be in that corridor from about Karlsruhe to Frankfurt and over to, I guess, Leipzig and maybe the Polish border. And we're running out of time, but before we go, we've had a couple tornado warnings across northeastern Colorado. These are laying down a strong outflow pool. You can see those pushing away from these storms. However, yeah, definitely some severe weather in there. Looks like a few brief tornadoes, hail, and some high winds. And that other complex in the DFW area has tracked down the Interstate 45 corridor. I'm really surprised there's not very much northeastward extent. In fact, that area from Ferris down to Corscana getting hit pretty hard, and that has been a particularly hard hit area the past couple of weeks. They've had multiple severe weather tracks right through there. I don't know why that's such a favored area, but it's happening once again. Anyway, that probably will continue to move down the boundary and into East Texas this evening. And there's the action we have out in the hill country, 110 degree temperatures helping to generate those storms, and they are producing an outflow boundary there as well. And speaking of the hill country, I'm going to leave you with some footage taken in San Antonio back on Saturday. That's from Greg, and if you're enjoying it, please leave a comment and let Greg know you liked it. He does appreciate that feedback. Thanks to our newest supporter, Joseph Fulton. I think that might have actually been a renewal, but in any case, I appreciate you taking the time to do that. So thank you very much, Joseph. As a reminder, the quarterly break is scheduled for next week, so I'm going to be off then. And then we return on July 3rd for the supporters and July 5th for everybody else. But we will be back on Friday, and we'll see you then for another edition of Forecast Lab. Have a good one. Bye-bye.